Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you Monday, May the 10th. The year's 2021. Let's talk trading. Drawing the line with Walmart. These videos are for educational purposes only. Your results may differ from mine and from Walmart's. Walmart, we were talking earlier and you said, hey, we should do a video about drawing the line. Yeah, and, that, and that's that's the thing, you know. There's a couple ways you can even take that drawing the line. Where do you draw the line when you're looking for an entry? Where do you draw a line when you're going to get out? You know, those are the two obvious ones. But I think what I was referring to at the time is, which is I think just as important, if not even more important, is you're in a trade. And let's say the trade is going in your direction, you know, and you're sitting there and you're monitoring the trade and you're watching it go up, you're watching it go up, you're watching it go up. Then all of a sudden, as trades do, it starts to go again. Against you you know not that you're in negative territory but it starts to come down against you where do you draw the line where do you go and say okay I've got profit on the table right now that I can take put into the bank and keep from me <laughs> make it my money not the bank's money and that's what's important you got to go and draw the line say hey you know like right now price is at you know 4134 and let's say I was in a long trade where do I draw that draw that line you have to figure that out and everybody everybody's gonna be a little bit different based on your method of entry based on your method of exit based on a lot of different things but the problem what I see a lot of traders do is okay my line of demarcation is if it drops below 41.34 I'm out right you don't say that you even may even write it down on a piece of paper in front of you you may even go and write it you know on your screen with it with some type of fancy dancy you know notepad type of thing and what do you do it gets down to 41 you know, it gets down to that 34 line and then you say you know what I'm just going to hold on I want to see where the next tick goes I want to see where the next you know the next thing oh it went against oh it's only one tail it went down one point i can go hold out another point and next thing you know it's one point one point one point next thing you know you now instead of being at 34 where you should have gotten out now you're sitting at 33 or 32 or 30 or 25 and now that nice profitable trade is completely gone and now you're sitting there going and exiting out of the trade and you're all upset because you had money in the on the table that could have been in the bank and it's all gone <laughs> and you know <laughs> I don't know if you've experienced that, Tiro, but I know I have. <laughs> yeah, I was getting ready to say that sounds like the voice of experience. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. You know, and part of it said the whole thing, that greed thing. You know, and you know, if you're a swing trader, you know, it, that's a different story. You know, you're looking for, you know, let's say you're you're. I'm, please don't take this as trading advice, but let's say your your trading setup says that hey, this thing is going to get up to you know, uh, I don't know, forty three hundred, you know, one point four three zero zero on the pound dollar, you know, just because it came down, you know, three, four, five, six pips, you know, that's that should be inconsequential to you, you know, it really shouldn't bother you in the least. But the problem is sometimes we get up to, you know, we get up to that, let's say that that TP of, you know, 1.4300 and we're at, you know, 42.99. Okay. We drew a line in the sand that we're going to get out at that 42.99 and it gets all, uh, it gets out of 4300 rather. It gets up to 42.99 and it starts to turn around against you. Are you going to be so thick headed to go and say, I'm going to go and wait. I want that 4,300. My gosh, I'm going to wait for that market to get me to 4,300. The next thing you know, I'm sitting there and it's no longer at 4,299. It's now sitting at 4,250 or worse, you know, because you were, you know, as the old expression goes, you, you were pig headed, <laughs> you know, and we have to be careful of that, you know, yeah, there's a, you draw a line in the sand and you say, you know what, uh, this is where, this is my exit point this is what i'm gonna do you know if my tech tp is uh, is up above my head now i have to be smart and say okay don't be greedy just for one you think about it. i went and because i didn't want to go and lose one pip i wind up going and losing 50 pips or instead of worse than that one point and wind up losing 50 pips and we have to be real careful about that you know and then the, the second part of it is when you start changing your rules, that's when you really start getting into trouble. If you start saying, you know what, I'm just going to get out at, you know, at 41.34 and I'm putting that as my line in the sand. That's where I'm going to get out. That way I can get a nice, decent profit out of the deal, you know, and, uh, and I can move on. And 
problem is right yeah sure here if you gotta let it go let it go let it go maybe you can let it go even down to your break even or whatever but what if you're in a tighter trade now what you're doing is you're going to have some rules that you've gotten used to breaking and the next thing you know when you're in a situation where you don't have any quote quote unquote pips to spare you know you're going to start breaking rules then and next thing you know instead of just getting out of break even or plus one or plus two you're getting out with a negative number and that's good that's when you start turning into a trader that's starting to lose money right because you know how good i am sometimes at entering at inflection points <laughs> yeah, yeah. but the thing is the, the thing is you, you usually write about where the overall market's going to go and that's because of your experience you know and so if you know that and you've got enough room in your account you can sit there and let it go against you and wait for it to come back but the thing is you know when when you're somebody like me when you're just starting out just starting to put things together and starting to do pretty well with it you know, you don't have as much experience. Now, I, I, you know, in all seriousness, I probably have, I don't know, probably 10, 10, 12 years experience doing this now. But still, I still consider myself a noob with all of this. You know, every day I learn something, so I must be still a noob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I... <laughs> But, you know, and that's the thing, though, it, you, you, we put, why do we put, how, you know, how do we put together rules and why do we put together rules? Because of our experience, our experience taught us something. And if we, if our experience taught us something, why do we go and violate those rules? Why do we go and draw a line in the sand and cross over it anyway? And, you know, that's, to me, that seems a little foolish, but, you know, we all do it. And every one of us is going to do it at some point in time. The thing is, when we start doing it often enough that instead of just, you know, happening from time to time, it winds up being a habit. And that's the problem. You know, it's, you break it once, you'll break it twice. You break it twice, you'll break it three times. And then at that point, you, it's all over. <laughs> <laughs> at least for me, anyway. Yeah. You know, I like to go and use the analogy of dieting. Why do most people go and die, fail at diets? You know, it's the type of thing. Well, I'm going to have a cheat day. Well, the cheat day means you can go and eat this, that, or whatever. It's things that you're probably not supposed to have on your diet. And the next thing you know, that cheat day, all oh, that felt really good. I love that cheat day. Next week, you have a cheat day. And the next thing you know, the week after that, you're having a cheat day. And then you start wondering, how come I'm not losing the weight I thought I was going to go and lose? And the next thing you know, oh, well, this diet doesn't work. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and the thing is, I see this with traders as well. That's what traders do, you know. They break the rule, they break the rule, they break the rule, they get used to breaking the rule, and then they go and say, well, this method doesn't wait, work, I'm quitting this method, I'm going to go find a new method. No, the method works fine, it's just that you kept on breaking the rules of the method. <laughs> yep, that's, that's what happens. That's what happens a lot of times. Yeah, and, and we all do it, you know. It's thing is, what do we do? We go and rein ourselves in, you know, and and that's just the reality, you know. And you know, I was just reading a post on Facebook that a trader just put up there about, you know, he he said, I guess this is the reason why you do your plus three minus three because he did seen a trade out there where it went up like plus three or something like that. It was a short, and then it ran all the way up. A, up against the other side and then he could have gotten out with like plus 10 or more and he's exactly right that's the reason why i do it it's, i have that rule in place for a reason i just know that if i go plus three and if it doesn't continue going there's a good chance it's going to run the other direction because if you go and look at the hourly chart on the pound dollar there is so many hourly candles where there's on one end of it where the candle didn't expand they put in a low let's say the candle was a was a green candle you got so many candles that are out there with a three pip um, wick on the bottom side and then turns around and runs 10 15 20 pips in the other direction that's the right reason why i have the rule there if i'm a plus three and it runs against me minus three i'm out i don't care if it's going to come back because if it comes back then that's just another uh, opportunity to enter in the same direction you know so yeah it may take two hours to go and make my 10 pips then but so what you know that's i'm trying to protect the account i'm trying i drew a line in the sand and i'm going to follow that line you know i'm just i'm going to obey i'm going to obey the rules <laughs> yeah you know the drawing the line it's like you said the question though is um, if you're going to move the line, you only move it in your direction. You don't move it against you. <laughs> That's exactly right. You know, 
And it's sort of like, I, I know that you've heard me say that in fact, the last trade I was in, you heard me say it. Uh, I said something along the lines of, I'm going to get out here unless, it, unless the ticks go in my direction. Right. Ticks go in my direction, I'm going to stay in. They don't go my direction. If I just get one negative tick here, I'm out. And that's just what I do. I'll move the, I will move the line, but I'm going to move it in my favor. I'm not going to move it in the, in the, you know, in the, in the broker's favor. <laughs> that's just silly. <laughs> yeah, it is. But, you know, a lot, of, like you said earlier, you know, um, Traders, they um, believe their own press releases. They believe their own predictions, and it's kind of like it's like you know, drug dealer. Good drug dealer doesn't do drugs. <laughs> so you know, like, the same difference. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and you just you just gotta go and you know, and one of the I think one of the greatest things that I learned in terms of trading is how to be disciplined and that's what you got to do you just got to be disciplined you're going to go and say okay this is this is where i'm willing to go in this is where i'm willing to go out and i'm not willing to change that and under any circumstances because you know if the moment you start changing things like that is the moment that you're sitting there and let's say your stop loss was minus 10 and now you've gone and you're now sitting there with a with a trade where you're minus 20 or minus 25 whatever it may be you know everybody's tra every trade is going to trade differently but that's what you find you know yeah it may work out this time and that time and this time but the thing is eventually it comes back and it nails you and when usually when it nails you it nails you pretty hard and now you're sitting there with, you know, I'm not necessarily going to say that one trade is going to blow your account, but it could, you know, but it certainly is going to go put a dent in your ability to go take the next trade because it's going to mess up your psychology and it's going to mess up the amount of money that you have to trade. You have less money in your account to go and actually use as gunpowder to go next to next, next trade. Yeah. And one thing I just to let the uh, boys and girls and non-binary traders know um, Walmart, I asked him before we got on the call about, you know, at the top of the hour, uh, about the Walmart lines. He goes, no Walmart lines, uh, this hour because it's past time. And I said, okay. He goes, well, you don't have to trade it that way. I go, but yeah, but you're Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and the thing is, the one thing I'll go and recommend for everybody to go and do is to go and, you know, to go and make the method fit them. You know, that's the thing. Make the method fit you because that's the whole thing. It's got to fit you because, you know, and that's why I was saying that to you because it's the type of thing where you may go and see my Walmart lines and you may go and say, you know what? I got a way that I can trade and I can get, make money trading it this way. And that's, that's, that's the thing too because if you don't own it, it's not yours. And that's the whole thing. You got to own it. And, that, you know, that's, that's the whole, <laughs> that's the whole, you know, whatever you know uh kitten caboodle as as my as my granddaddy would say mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you got to go and trade you got to own what you have and that, and that's you know that's a part of drawing the line too is that you know this is you know this is your trading account it's not TRO's. It's not mine. It's not your neighbor next door. It's your account. And therefore, you need to go and protect your account the best way that you can. And that's that's the most important thing. you got to be able to go and, you know, uh, protect that account. And that's that's why we draw lines on the trail chart and say, this is, what, this is how much I'm willing to literally burn in the street if I lose this trade. You know, and you have to look at it that way. Am I willing to go and take, you know, take this $20 bill out of my pocket, walk out into the middle of Broadway and take a match and set it on fire? Okay. And it won't bother me. Are you willing to do that? If you're not willing to do it, then you need to go and figure out what is the level that you can do it at until you get used to it. That's part of drawing that line. It's just knowing where you are. Yeah, and guess what? The fastest 15 minutes in trading is up once again. So, fellow traders, we might talk about drawing the line sometime soon, so definitely stay tuned. And remember, it's not what you trade, it's how you trade it. So go out there and drain the banks. And if you're new here, click subscribe, click the bell to be notified of when the videos are coming out, and uh, give me a like or thumbs up. That way more people get to see these videos. This is the Rumpled One, over and out.